Organic react reactions are simply the breaking of covalent bonds and the making of covalent bonds. And I really want to emphasize the word covalent because in organic molecules, we very seldom see ionic chemistry. Almost everything we'll be talking about will be covalent compounds and so therefore the breaking and the making of covalent bonds. And there are just a few ways that this can happen. Let's take a look. Bonds are simply shared pairs of electrons. So I'm going to write two atoms. Don't want to say what they are right this minute, so I'm going to write Y and Z. And there's our bond. That bond can break, making a pair of radicals. If the shared pair splits up, and one stays with Y and one stays with Z, we use arrows to track what's happening with electrons. And when we're talking about a single electron, we use a fishhook arrow. So this is telling us that one of these arrow, one of these two electrons is staying with Y, and one of these is staying with Z. This is a convention called arrow pushing. It lets us track electrons, and because electrons are the essence of bonds, it's really important to be able to track what's happening with electrons. And so we use this convention just a quick heads up, uh, it's easy to get confused about these arrows, and some students visualize these things as showing where something goes and where it comes and it, it's from, and that's not the case. It's not something, it's not atoms, it's electrons only. And the head of the arrow shows where the electron goes, and the arrow itself starts where the electron is. There's another way that we could see two electrons split up. If these guys were attached by a multiple bond, we could have cleavage of that bond with one electron going there and one electron going there and not make two things. These guys would still be attached by a sigma bond. And so that's a second possibility. This chemistry is common, but it's not common for the chemistry we're going to talk about. We will spend very little time talking about reactions where one electron goes one way and one electron goes the other. This is called homolytic cleavage. It's important chemistry, but it will be just a sidelight for us in this course. More likely, we'll be talking about bond breaking where a pair of electrons moves. And we could picture this pair of electrons, and now this is a regular arrow, not a fish hook. Or we could picture this pair of electrons staying with C. These are two very different possibilities in many cases. One case, that pair of electrons that stays with Y, which creates a negative charge on Y, is shown there and we've taken the pair of electrons away from Z, so it's positively charged. In the other case, Y has lost the electrons, it's positively charged, and Z has the electrons, so it's negatively charged. Now I'm going to ask you to think about this. Which of these will really happen? Do you think it's likely that both will? Or will one be preferred over the other significantly? To answer that question, you have to say, which pair would be more stable? And that typically is determined by which atom is more electronegative. So let's just say that this is more electronegative. Two things. Well, Ron will really will recognize right away that that means that this is a polar covalent bond and that Z has a partial negative charge, the Y has a partial positive charge. And we'll say that Z with its greater electronegativity is more stable. This will be less stable. So now you find it very easy to answer which will happen. Of these two possibilities, it's easy to see that this guy fits with Z being more electronegative. And we could predict, knowing almost no organic chemistry, that of these two reactions, this will be favored and this one will not be favored. Up above, we considered a case where we had a double bond. And let's look at this. And notice that we could also have a two-electron bond cleavage that leads to only one thing again. 
Whereas up here we were cleaving a single covalent bond and we made two things. Down here there's a double bond. So one bond is left and we could picture this pair of electrons. So we'll make sure we have a full arrow, headed arrow. Staying with Z in bond breaking, we would end up with plus and minus. Because different things happen to Y and Z, this is called heterolytic cleavage. And our arrow pushing lets us track what's happening exactly. The pair of electrons will stay with the element that's more electronegative if one of these is more electronegative than the other. And so that will dictate what kind of chemistry happens. It's really fairly simple.